How's that? Happy? Right. Okay, the long awaited. It's not that long. Uh, it's not very awaited either. Um, QA with me and Charlie. Now that I'm up in Cardiff for like the foreseeable future because of you know what. Um, we thought we'd finally fit in the Q&A that we've been wanting to do for a while. So we've got amazing natural light, huge window. So let's get started. What are we going to start with? You can be in charge of picking questions. Uh, this is the first, this was, these were all listed in one video. I think I have a better mug. No. I don't do Disney. <laughs> who is Charlie? Uh, who is Charlie? What do you do and what would you realistically like to do when you graduate? Give us a short intro. 30 seconds, go. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't say 30 seconds, but I thought I'd have that. Uh, I'm Ed school friend of seven years in April. I am studying physiotherapy at Cardiff University. And when I graduate, I'm hoping to work for the NHS. You will be, in light of what's going on. <laughs> you will be there now. <laughs> um, this, was, this question was asked by somebody on Instagram. But it was also asked on YouTube. There is a crossover. How did we meet, start dating? Should I do this? Well, you can do it. You probably remember it better than me. I joined the club in 2012, Binya Cycling Club, and Ed was part of a little development team there. And it was your friend Adam who actually started talking to me first. It took ages. Yeah, you were new. You were new to the club. You were new to the club. Yeah. I'd been there like three. Uh, yeah, three years maybe I'd been there, and you you just joined. Yeah. Your dad used to race. So that's your kind of background into the cycling, cycling joining the cycling club. Uh, why did you join the cycling club? Because I got bored of riding on my own because Laura kept uh -huh. abandoning me. Yeah, so and then <coughs> I decided I'd join Vinya Cycling Club in like the new year, the new year, because that was back in 2011 and I, I did. And we became friends. And then in April 2013, we started dating. Yeah. So I... Was it 2013? Yeah, it would have been 2013. Because <clears throat> I uh, started writing for GLT Condor. In November. In, in November 2012. Yeah. And then I went away. <clears throat> for those of you that haven't seen, there is a video, obviously, of like how I progressed and things into riding for what we call a professional team and when I left the cycling club and went straight into GLT Condo at like November then uh, we were like keeping in touch back and forth there's somebody in the window over there and then I went away for like two months to Australia uh, on, on a training camp so it was like a very weird and then you got back and I went away yeah, you were in Thailand for like a month as well, so that was a great start to our relationship. But, um, well, of course, the age difference, it's quite... I mean, well, it's people, not that good deal. No, people don't actually bring it up. Well, people don't even know, they don't even realise, because I look so old. <laughs> <laughs> but um, a lot of people say, like, um, the age difference is like seven six years depends like what time of year it is but yeah i'm older it doesn't yeah it doesn't make an ad <laughs> by like six and a half years if we'd done this yesterday when i hadn't shaved then that probably would have been uh challengeable <laughs> what is your view on cycling and the life and training of a pro cyclist uh has your time with ed given you any insights that has changed your views on it um so my dad was quite successful in his day, like in the 1970s. Yeah, he rode with the Nomads, didn't he, in London? Yeah, he was, he was the first cat rider, he was quite good at what he did, and then when he gave up racing full-time, he commuted. 
Uh, so I've grown up with, I've kind of grown up in that world. Like I, my parents aren't like pushy parents. So they were never the type of parents to say you need to get into cycling. Um, but I grew up with the Tour de France on the TV. I grew up with like the Spring Classics, a uh, house full of cycling biographies and books and analysis and things like that. Um, so you've actually grown up in the cycling yeah. world, whereas I have, and that's a little bit like, it's all, you'd almost expect it to be the other way around, I think. Um, it's funny because whenever I go and see Charlie's dad, um, you know, he just talks about cycling and, you know, what is he now, 75? 74. 74. Yeah. And he's like, it's a very, uh, it's a very... It's, he's really passionate about it, isn't <laughs> yeah. he? He's only just, re he's been CSAS marshalling races for the last couple of years. He's only just retired from doing that for health reasons. But I, my, I love cycling. It's one of my, it's definitely one of my first passions. Um, it's always useful and interesting having an insight into the world that Ed works in because it's it's not always what people think it is, it's not always what people expect and there's a lot of travel. So, what, so what's the weirdest, because that's another question, like what's the weirdest um, <clears throat> thing about like my lifestyle I guess or like I suppose that that is, that, that, it's like the invisible bit, like what don't you see that um, I suppose... <laughs> the travel's a big one, obviously. Travel's but... a big one, because, like, you know, we spend portions of the year apart when you're away on, like, working and, and touring or racing abroad. And then there's also the aspect of, like, I do a lot of... I do a lot of running around, because we share a car, so... Um, like there's a lot of like backwards and forwards for me to pick him up from the airport or from train stations and things like that. Um, I try to ride, but <laughs> you do try and ride. Um, there's nothing particularly weird about actually cycling. It suppose it's just the travel and the. But then, like we haven't really known any different because we kind of got together and then it like literally two days later Ed was away for a month. So it's that's kind of set a precedent for the relate having to like manage a long term, long distance relationship. You have to kind of like put that time in and make that effort to spend time with one another, um, because he is away so much or like I'm busy. So mm. I again, I, I think that's <clears throat> I help you with the race analysis a lot. Like when you get off the bike, we have a chat in the car on the way back. Well that's just we a, that's just a long event. It's not because I I give you my kind of insights into things and you're always like, oh we should be filming this, we should be filming this, you've got a really good like you've got loads to say. Like it's a really good interpretation and I'm just like no because I don't like being on camera. <laughs> True story. <laughs> um okay uh <laughs> let's try and whiz through these. Um What's your thoughts on Zwift? Oh, or, I think or it's... Or any like, virtual cycling platform? I, I think it's great. I think it, especially in this climate, I think it's providing people with an opportunity to carry on with their training and work towards their goals. I think anything that's like innovative like that is, is a useful tool. It, you can use it as an adjunct to what you're doing outside. It's interesting you say that because people... It gets flack from people because... There's actually nothing wrong with it. It, it. It's helping people ride, get fit, get on their bikes. If they want to compete, they can compete and, and do it competitively. But the bare bones of it is it's helping people do that. Mm. And the flat comes from people that just dislike anybody that has a passion for something it's like not that. i think it's this old-fashioned view of like to be able to train properly you have to do it outside and i just don't think i i don't think that that's the case i think like when we were trying to get me fit for tenerife a couple of years ago i did the majority of my training on an indoor trainer using online videos and that was what got me up ltd 
um, basically because I was time constrained by work and exams and things like that. So, you know, you've got to be, I think an, a flexible approach is probably the healthiest approach and keeping an open mind. I think it's a great adjunct to, to train in personally. I think they're targeting you. Targeting to me. If I could choose two types of structured workers, what would they be and why? Uh, first one would probably be the cleverly named Superman section. Um, which I only name because it just feels like you're flying basically. Um, where you do, and you're probably better working up to it because it'll involve a lot of time with your heart rate raised at a very high level. Um, and that's one minute on, 30 seconds off, uh, 20 times. So that is just a 30 minute block of doing that straight. Um, very like time efficient, very like, well, just makes you feel very strong basically if you're capable of doing it even if you're not capable of doing it you can break it in two chunks you can have like a short two or three minute break in between um it's still a very very good session the other one probably is anything to do with like riding at a uh, sub threshold pace for like uh, again you could start at five minutes but i do 10 to 15 minutes at that and when I say sub threshold, I mean like between 90 and 100% of FTP. And then um, the last five minutes, you do like over and unders. So they can be 30 30s, they can be 40 20s, uh, they can be 20 40s, it can be whatever you want. Um, but the idea is they kind of give you that um, steady state and then the over and under as well. Um, Ed! <laughs> um, I was gonna end on that because what? Yeah, we've done that. All right. What do you think about the vlog and YouTube thing? Well, I suppose the live streaming thing is pretty good. Pretty. Uh, I like it as long as I don't have to be in it. Yeah. Well, that's that's <laughs> the view of a lot of people actually. In fact, that's why a lot of people don't do it. But <laughs> I, the way I view it is, and I've spoken to people about it lots. I know this is your question, but it's just my personal view on it. Um, I'm doing it actually from, I've always said like I'm scratching my own itch. And I'm doing it because it also gives me like a whole backlog of videos that I can come back to in like 30 years time and go like, oh wow, so that's what I did. Like I didn't even remember I did that. Um, I think the response to your stuff has been really positive. Like it's really nice going to races and getting people coming up and introducing themselves. And um, I suppose from my point of view, I'm just a bit shy and I don't really like, Yeah. I don't really like the idea of people judging me based on a 10 minute clip yeah. of me. And, um, and it's a camera, like it's very weird because it's, it's not, unless you have like, we have here the screen to the side, you can actually talk to the screen, you can see the screen, you can see yourself, but it doesn't look, it doesn't look natural when you're looking to the side. But that doesn't really matter. I don't really know where to look with the camera either, that's the thing. And like it, like I said, it's really nice that people come up to you and introduce themselves, but I usually just stand to one side like a lemming, because <laughs> people just, they either assume that I shouldn't be there or they don't know who I am and people don't even say hello sometimes. And that that's taken a little bit of, getting used to hasn't it mm. like people just kind of pushing me out of the way and ignoring me so they can talk to you which is a bit like oh. what would be the hardest uk hill climb you have to defend your title if it was up to you mm. anything short I'm sure you knew that would be the answer anything uh my achilles heel is like anything between like a minute and a half to mm. like uh, three to four minutes. I have a very flat, my fatigue resistance at like five minutes is very good. Um, my one minute power is very, well, I say very good, it's good for you know my weight and whatnot. Um, it's like 660 watts. Uh, so, but then it, it fatigues very quickly in between those two numbers. So for me, any climb that's, that's that short, um, I really struggle at it. Um, have you considered a, I'm guessing that means Lance and Jungle Roads. Jungle. I don't know. No, Jungle says, is something different. Or Jungle is Jungle Roads Lance End. Yeah. 
I wonder why they put John O'Groth landing rather than lands in John O'Groth. Anyway, uh, yes. I want to do the <laughs> yeah, GB Duro. Can I also do GB Duro? Uh, which I also want to do as well. Le Jog or Joggle. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not I try a record attempt is another thing. Um, but yes. Okay, let's whiz through these. How did you meet? We've done that. Uphill or downhill? Uphill. Downhill. Uh, <laughs> if you could build a completely custom bike for each of you, what would it be? I love your channel. Thank you very much. Oh, that is so tough. Come on, I asked you this last night in preparation for today. Yeah, but I still, I'm still undecided. Uh, personally, I'd go down a different material route. I wouldn't necessarily go carbon. I'd probably go titanium um, and I'd spec it out a lot differently. Mm. I'd like it to be as light as possible. That's my niche, so lightweight. Um, but I also love functionality, so it would have to be like comfortable. I'd have to be able to do like long rides on it, plus you know it being like very light. I think I'd want something colourful. No, like off, like off-road specific, but with the correct kind of um, frame geometry. When you two are home together, who cooks? <laughs> You're doing a bit more cooking now, aren't you? I'm encouraging you to do a bit more of the cooking, but I, I do the majority of the cooking. Uh... Well, I do the dishes. Um, <laughs> no, I do, I do cook. Yeah. Um, my signature dish is an omelette. Uh, do a good fish pie. <laughs> my signature dish is probably my chili. The thing is, mm. my it's very nice chili. Thank you. My the problem is mm -hmm. I eat um, a lot. Yeah, I, do. <laughs> I eat um, like whatever fits the bill. Like I don't mm. I don't eat meals as such. I do if Charlie cooks it, and if I'm like feeling in a particular mood, I will cook a meal. But if usually. I won't cook a meal, I'll just cook like... You eat for purpose. I'm yeah, I eat sure. for purpose, yeah, it's a good purpose, it? When was the last time we rode together? Uh, that was to the hill climb for the Cardiff Uni Cycling Club in so November. Like, um, <laughs> so it's like nearly six months uh, ago. Because I'm having a year out yeah. from cycling because I've got quite a lot of... It's my final year, so there's quite a lot going on. Thoughts on subcompact cranks for amateurs, good idea or man up? Oh, we uh, debated this last night, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. I say subcompact, so like a 48 uh, big ring and like an even smaller, smaller ring. Mm. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah, I agree. Um, when will my British Champ kit be arriving? It was being made. Uh, I'm not sure if it has been made. It's been made in China, ironically, so... Favorite type of training or off day ride? What, for both of us or for you? For yeah, everyone us. loves a cafe ride tonight. Probably if we're back at home, either Pembroke Country Park mm. um, because it's all on a cycle path. Yeah. Uh, but then again, so is Mumbles Pier. That's all on a cycle path. Oh, I like a pier run. Mm. So it has to involve a cycle path mm. and it has to involve a cafe. And our friends. Yes. Yeah. Some of them. Not all of them. <laughs> uh, did Charlie go to Bangor Uni? I didn't. I had placement in Bangor around this time last year. It was my first placement. Um, so I stayed in the area and commuted to Carnarvon on the bike because there's a lovely cycle path all the way to Carnarvon from Bangor. Uh, how will you stay motivated to train with no events until at least the 30th of June? Swift. Um, personal challenges, so identifying your weaknesses, trying to work on them and setting personal bests at those, whilst not going too overboard with it, um, and trying to stretch out that, that power duration curve, so when you have like your maximum power and it drops off as the time goes on, try and stretch that power curve out now that you have a chance to kind of back off, um, I guess, intensity, because we have like another two months, or three months almost. Yeah, three months until things might seem like they're back um, to normal. That's it, I think. Have we missed any questions? 
if we do, if we have, Sorry. just put more down below and we'll just have to do another. Maybe we won't be quarantined by then. Maybe we'll actually be like able to do it outside in the sunny day that is beautiful. Right. It's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from him. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>